So we're going for 8 minutes 40 on this one. So tonight we're using, well, obviously we're using Astro Planner right here. We're just doing an observation. Um, and one of the things I did was uh, tonight I, I found out that if I went back 75 out before I came in, I was doing my autofocus, it worked a lot better. I, was usually, I usually do 40 or 50, but tonight I, um, it's quite, I mean, it's quite warm. The temp it's out there is uh, still 21.6 degrees at uh, what nearly 10 to midnight. So it's been a very warm day today. Um, what I've been doing is I made the crazy decision to collimate my scope and I used um, uh, OACL, which is a little camera you put in the back with a piece of software and you. Um, Put some concentric rings, one on the kind of eyepiece focuser or backfall, I think, and then the other one around the image of the second, the image of the secondary mirror, I suppose. Not the image of the secondary, but the secondary mirror is showing the image of the primary. And um, these apparently are calibrated, and you have to put you put an offset in so that they know where they exactly in the middle that they are. And uh, yeah, it seems to to work. Um, I tried, I have to say this is the fourth time and the secret was to have a lot more light coming into it. So I tried a panel, the same panel I used to make flats and, and where you have to keep on moving the panel up to get to the screws on a, on a Schmidt cast screen, it, it was far better to do it pointing out into daylight and uh, that worked really well. So yeah, so I was quite pleased um, with that, but it's still very warm out there. Um, to 10 minutes. So what I'll do is actually I'm just going to uh, log that. Um, and let me just record that. So I'll put that as an attachment into um, and uh, I'll just grab the back to fire mode on that um, oh yeah this is the sky so our guest planetarium program today is uh, the sky um, it is uh, 400 US dollars or 325 British pounds of decadence um, is it worth 325 pounds or 400 dollars don't know it's hard to say it does do good some great things by the way um it works better in some ways than stellarium does but stellarium by the way also works better than the sky does sometimes by the way that it actually shows the images and so on um here's an image of m27 which is nice but it would be nice if i could just press the button and see the deep sky survey images all the way around it as well but you can't do that with um the sky but a minor thing but one of the major things for me is you may see this purple box that's here um that is the field of view indicator for an altazm on the telescope except the sky doesn't do field of view indicators for altazm um it does it for um, equatorial mounted telescopes um, so I've had to write a little script that basically just um, it just measures the um, position angle and then applies it to the rotator. And I'm using the ASCOM rot whoops, can't see it. ASCOM rotator simulator as my way into the system because through the scripting I can uh, tell the rotator to change to the position angle that I want which then corrects this so it actually lines up north first north top shall i say not north first north top and as you see this is the outer sort of grid and it lines up nicely with that um but normally it lines up with the ra deck pointing towards the celestial pole obviously um so that was interesting so i had to write a little script um, which is great because the sky professional allows you to write javascript um, and this is a dotnet program over here 
and the .NET program uh, controls everything. So it controls um, Astro Planner, it controls the sky, it controls SharpCat Pro now. So um, when I press sync from in here, um, it will then, whatever object I've got, put it in here, it will sync. Um, say I wanted to go to M5, I press sync, it will fly over to M5. And as you see, um, the indicator kind of was at the funny angle pointing towards Celestial North and now it's pointing correctly, um, orientated correctly uh, for an l -tazimut. Now, um, they are going to, well, I say they are, uh, one of the uh, very helpful uh, support engineers, um, Thomas, I think was his name, said they were going to add it to the wish list. Um, but I just thought, well, you can do it anyway, so it's not really a problem. So yes, yeah, so this little tool over here, which is where it's written in C Sharp, um, and it communicates because all of these programs, Astro Planus, The Sky, uh, Professional, and um, SharpCat, all have scripting languages. And uh, so uh, The Sky uses JavaScript. Um, the SharpCat uses uh, Iron Python, which is obviously Python, but also allows you access to the, the .NET um, assemblies and framework that you get through there. And uh, Astro Planner uses, I might get this wrong, is it Zojo script? It's the same language that this is actually written in. Um, so, yeah, in fact, here it is. If I just bring it up because, oh, I didn't let it run script, sorry. Uh, oh, it's not, oh, there it is. I'll get to it because I've got things, um, there we go. So here we go. Oh, it's double spacing right now, but this is a beta, so we just it dub started double spacing for some unknown reason. So, uh, but there it is. There's the kind of scripting language that you do there, and this little tool, yeah, just um, allows me to do whatever I want. So we're, we're syncing. Ooh, it's syncing right now. Uh, let's go back to um, twenty-seven, and you see how it change the field of view indicator there, back to N27. Uh, let's go somewhere else. So we'll come back out to the south and take a look. Now, I haven't planned anything tonight. I'm just doing this on the fly. Um, so we're at M27, which is up here. And the little telescope indicator is showing it there. That's all right. I should have just hit the find button and it will find it for me. Uh, we could go and do M71. thinking M71. In which case, let's add in a new object, um, M71. Um, there's three entries for it. There's the colander, catalog, the messier, and the, the SAC DSO. I'm gonna go with colander because it's got the other names for it as well. So we'll add that into the system. Um, we we'll sync. There we go. Ooh, I'm just, little globular. Um, we target it, so that sets everything up. And now we're just going to go and slew over to um, M71, aka NGC6838. And there it is. Uh, we were be we've been capturing uh, four and eight seconds tonight. Um, M27 we captured at eight seconds. Um, M71. Shall we try eight seconds on that? Let's just go to capture modes and see what we do. So that just sends a message to um, SharpCat. Phew, <laughs> thought it was going to do it. Um, that sends a message to SharpCat um, to go into the mode. As you see at the top, it's got M71 now. Oh, we've exceeded the FWHM filter. Let's see on the next one what happens. He exceeded it again. This is quite high. Let's move it up a bit. But it's a bit fuzzy tonight. I think it's quite hot and everything's a bit. Oh, there we go, 606, and we should have given it a bit of time. So there's M71, which is nice. Wait for a couple more. Oh, yeah, so we've got to take that down there. 
That was obviously a bit of bad seeing, so we'll break them down a little bit more. Uh, let's do an auto stretch and let's do an auto color. We'll do another auto stretch. Green tonight, aren't we? Oh, the color's really high because I was looking at a nebula. Let's bring it down a bit. Oh, there you go. It's full of stars. A nice star field. So we've got in the corners here, you can see these little fuzzy bits, especially that corner. In this corner, you've got them. In this corner, you've got. This corner, you've got some little sausage things, stars. Down here, fantastic. Up here, there's still a bit of coma up here. So it's almost as if, it's almost as if the image is, is tilted slightly. But down here, yeah, I've got the little coma type things. But it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I <laughs> tried to, my first three attempts at collimating it with OACL were a bit of a disaster, even though I watched a few YouTube videos and thought I got it, I hadn't actually picked up the crucial thing that I was orientating on the wrong ring. And to be fair, I think one of the, I can't remember the gentleman who did it, he did point out, he said, you really got to sort out which what you're looking at. And I basically, I think I was using, I was trying to orientate the secondary mirror by using the secondary mirror um, and its image of the primary mirror, which I suppose, I don't know if that would work, but it didn't work. So it, it's, um, well, it didn't work accurately enough. So this one worked quite well. I think tonight's like I said, it's a bit fuzzy. There we go. So we're at three minutes, four seconds, and that's a, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really look, does it, like um, a globular cluster. M71 is quite a, a sparse, well, say it's sparse, but it, I mean, it resembles more something like um, uh, M11 or something like that, so. But it is um, still nice. Mainly, I think, because it's set So mainly, I think, because it's set in this fantastic star field, which um, if we come back out to, so it's set right in the Milky Way, which is uh, full of stars, as they say. So we'll put that in. The sky's all right. Considering I bought it, I thought I'd better use it. I bought I've got quite a few actually on here. When I say a few, I mean I've got a, what's the actual laptop outside. Isn't it? So on here I've got um, a Starlight Pro 8, which has been updated for, is the word yonks still going? I think that means a long time. And um, I've got Goddess Du Ciel, which is in beta. I've got Stellarium, and I've got the sky. Um, and they all have their good bits. I mean, the sky is fantastic because it can actually um, load up the full like 1.2 million, nearly 1.3 million now, asteroids. Um, back to bring up the chart elements. Uh, in the Milky Way, would we see any? Let's find out. Um, so solar system objects, uh, small system objects, let's do a large database. Oh, there they are. And so we've got some asteroids, and this shows their 24 hour movement through the field. So that's quite neat. If we come out, you'll see how many there are, because there's 1.2 million, 1.3 million um, registered, and of course they, they find more and more all the time. So that's quite, um, quite interesting. Um, it can do that. It also has the concept of a small, um, 
a small catalogue as well. And that catalogue currently is holding the distance, the distant um, objects like Neptune, Neptune, Neptunian, um, trans-Neptunian um, asteroids. So if I look south, uh, there's one there. Hua, Hoya, Hua. Let's get rid of that now, we don't want that. Um, what, how far away is that? It's 28 astronomical units, so that's nothing. If we move this way a bit, here we go. We've got Maki Maki and Haumea. So Maki Maki, which I looked at um, a couple of weeks ago, um, is 52, nearly 53 astronomical units away. So that's 53 times 150 million kilometers. Um, that's much further out than Pluto. So these dark worlds, so Maki Maki and Haumea, is it? Um, that's slightly closer, I think. Uh, 49. Oh, 49 to what did I say? 52. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so what's 300 million kilometers between friends, eh? Um, and I think these aren't these in some kind of synchronization. I think are they synchronization with Pluto? I can't remember all synchronization with each other. Um, there's something going on about them. I mean, within, um, here we actually do have, hold on, where's the solar system? There you go. So we can see a huge number of comets and so on. Um, you can select them in here. That's the comets. That's um, what we got here. That's one we just looked at. He's over there. I don't think we can search for it. Oh, there it is. There's Maki Maki. So let's see if we can find. Oh. Why not? 50 AU is actually. Oh, there it is. So that's the. Anyway, there we go. What are we on? We're on seven minutes. So there we go. It's eight minutes. Let's um let's log it. So do we oh we didn't do an observation, let's do a new observation. And so this tool also has this um ability to log it. Um and what the logging actually does right now is it tells SharpCap um to take a picture. And then the, there's a script running in here all the time, which communicates, which um, this communicates with here. And there's a script it calls in Astro Planner, and a script obviously it calls in here. It actually has to pass the scripts uh, for um, the sky. And so what it does is that the uh, Sharp Cat sells this where the files are. So it, it gives it some um, things like gain and exposure and total exposure and things like that. Silly. And it then gives the two paths, one to the actual image and one to the settings file, which um, once it's got all that, it then the EA control panel then copies it across to the desktop, which I'm sat at right now. And that allows me um, to link it into Astro Planner. So if I just click on, um, oh, and this log and find means uh, log it and then go into um, find mode. But what I do is I'll I won't do that. I'll just say log. And then hopefully I should get a M71 picture. I did. And over here, which is my folder, I now have um, M71. Which uh, is nice. The um, debug on. Because I'm still... Obviously, this is, I would still keep it debug on just in case anything occurs. I think that's what's causing the problem when I try and 
so link. But what this does now is just by pressing that button, and if I just press find now, it will come out of here and do it. Um, it means that everything here is just controlled from this system, um, and this is the log. So it had to wait uh, four seconds for everything to take place over here um, before it had the files available so it could copy across. I think it only waits six. So we're quite close to the limit. I might have to update that a little more. Um, so that's this just gives a running thing. Oh, um, for some reason, Astro Planner on up offloads um, its scripts. I don't know why. Um, but, oh, there goes the satellite. So I have to keep on running a keep alive. So this thing just keeps on poking it and say, you know, keep that script loaded up in memory. Otherwise, you've got to wait two or three seconds for it to actually do something. Um, you wanted to do it quite quickly. Uh, what else have we got here? All oh, these are the tools. So, for example, if I did want to look at um, if I did want to look at, say, I don't know, planetary moons, for example. So, if I wanted to add planetary moons into here, I can just bring up the planetary moon script that's run from here. Um, or if I wanted to search this entire area for asteroids, even though I could even just look there, for example. Um, I could uh, search for asteroids as well in here. And the SCTSA is just so that I put it into deep space, into deep sky notation format for sharp cap. So if I'm looking for the location of something like a moon or the um, an asteroid or comet, uh, then I can grab those things. And currently it's getting the minor body information. The data source is JPL Horizons, which is um, the best source. It's very accurate. But I have to say, and that's another thing about the sky, is that when I compared it, and this wasn't highly scientific, it was only a couple of objects I chose, um, I found that the sky was very accurate within um, an arc second of um, the, the JPL, while others weren't so accurate. I mean, we already know that Astroplanner isn't that accurate. It's, I mean, all of them will put the object in the field of view, but um, to put a cross and say, there it is, you need JPL. But also um, the reason I've got this kind of grayed out figure here is that I think I might do a local one where this will get that information from the sky because its calculations, I think, are more inaccurate. And then that cuts out from to go across the web to... Um, the JPL Horizon servers. Um, so we'll speed everything up effectively. So that's the reason I lost things there. That's another job to do. And the other job to do is when I press log is not only to copy across everything onto my desktop, but also to do exactly what I do, and that is attach it to a new observation. Or log plus is designed that either attaches it to a new observation or it attaches it to an existing observation that's going on. So those are the next two things. And once, or well, next three things, I suppose, well, the next two things, um, logging and getting different information from um, the sky rather than from JPL Horizons. But then I think we're almost there. So let's, um, it's 12 past, 12 minutes past 12. Let's find something else to go for. Where are we now? We are at M71, weren't we, which was up here. Oh, I think I can center. Yeah, sorry, I was being silly. It was, um, there's a little center button. You you can configure all of this. Um, it's a bit like Carter's to see they they have the same thing that you can configure the tool, the toolbars. Um, and I just, this is the small toolbar, which has also got some other things added to it. So I can um, highlight the different the current um, constellation. I can measure things, you know, all the usual things that I would need, I put here. Um, and I, well, I forgot that I put on the little toolbar so I can center where the telescope is just in case I lose it. Um, while we're here, what's M56, 65 degrees, okay. Let's, let's add that in for tonight's pleasure. Um, I could just say the best, but I'm just going to look again just to see. Uh, I think I'll take the sack, this one. 
at the second. So there we go. And let's um, sync to that so we know where we're going. Oh, nice little globular cluster. And uh, let's make that the target. And we will slew. Now I've got it configured. So if I hit slew, I have to confirm it. Um, I could take that off and it just click that button and it would go. But um, where I was new to the sky, I, I wasn't 100%. Uh, well, when you're moving a telescope and the telescope's outside, um, it's more problematic if anything goes wrong. So, um, but we're off. Go to the constellation view. Oh, here it comes right there. So let's go back into the. And it's arrived. And there's M56 right there. Um, I think we're capable on capture mode two. So we'll just go straight into capture. There we go. And the target up, updated up here. And this is, should be set for eight seconds. It is. And there it is. A lovely little see that looks more globular like to me than M seventy one. Well M seventy one. Let me do a new observation. See that's nice. See that's a really nice, you know, um small globular with a dense pore. Yeah, fine. Cloud. Stars. Oh, I'm waxing poetical today, isn't it? A, a fine cloud of faint stars surrounds the core. Oh. We're a bit higher in the sky now, aren't we? Um, I wish I could tell you by using my object fields, but instead I'll tell you by using this and there's the altitude of 66 degrees. And that has improved. The stars are definitely coming on that corner. Something going on here that would say that the spacing's wrong, but I believe the spacing is F, it's F6.31. It's pretty close. In fact, on my system where I have a, 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 um, a beta planetarium very lock and I spin it round one and it goes below 6.3 and I spin it up above it's it's just one turn effectively and it's quite a small turn so that it, it's nothing but it might be quite important I don't know but I'm quite happy with that and on a nice night I think the image will be improved a bit more. So as you see, um, my field of view indicator is at an angle. So I'll just adjust it. I could set up to do automatic, set up a thread that keeps on calling it, but I'm not that um, worried. It would be nice because there is a field of view um, indicator in the object model for scripting, except all of it's read-only, or well, most of it is. So it says, and I think it's kind of right, it is kind of read-only. Take off that LS. Yeah. Problems of. Um... Oh, we have a bit of a thing there. What's the brightness? Oh, we've got something coming across, have we? Again. Temperature is 21.3 degrees. The humidity is 63%. So the dew point's 14. So I know we're close. I haven't the I've left the dew heaters off tonight um, because they they weren't needed last night. So can we just check the weather though? Um, let's go weather radar just to make sure. No, so there's no bad weather near us. I'll try windy northward, 2% clouds. Clear outside says.
now's good, one o'clock's good, and then from two, from three, we start getting very cloudy. So we might be that we've got some few clouds drifting. Oh yeah, look at that. I think we have definitely got some, some clouds drifting across. This image though, isn't it? Zoom in. Three minutes fifty two. We're losing frames, aren't we, because of the cloud? I'm not using a flat tonight. Five minutes four. Okay, uh, let's log it. So there we go. Let's uh, drag across. Once this is done, the program does it automatically. I think that'll be quite nice. Um, so there we go. Um, I don't think I had any images for that, but that's okay. Uh, let's just go into fine mode. What do is we'll just have another look around. So we're near the meridian now. It might be worth a little look at M57. Uh, let's do M57. And we're synced to M57. Like that. We will uh, target M57. Let's run over to M57. This is the first observation session I've used my new control panel in complete anger. So I've used bits of it up to now, but I've never used the full thing up to here. Um, so we keep capture mode two, which is eight seconds. We have targeted it already, so we we'll just capture. Start the capture of that object. A lot of noise for the first image that should produce a wooden. Start with 100% now, but you can see the. Um, oh, I just muted. You can see the central star. If you zoom right in, we're at 425% now. But you can see the central star right here. It's always nice, I do like that. So let's, um, what you can do is, is rather than just do a new observation, I can just do what they call quick observation. So it's just recorded, um, I say that. Huge. 
make it difficult. So the observation's done now. So it's there. So if I go into the observations tab, um, it's been added. Um, see, there's those object fields that were that kind of pop in and out all the time. So this is the this is the standard stuff that we will um, save with an observation. It's altitude. Ah, is so that is poetic angle minus fourteen point three degrees? That's interesting because if I go into here and press my LSAS field of view indicator, it comes up as a three four six. Three four six out fourteen is three sixty. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I am using the, the same angle to correct here. We've got the galaxy there, haven't we? Right there. So we've got IC1296, which is this one. It is. I can just about see it right there. And there's another PGC. 2024, 20, 20, and 4. That's 17.5, and I cannot really see that yet. But we've done 19 stacked frames. And of course, they're in Nebula. 